How big of a game is Kansas State for Missouri on Saturday? Plus, why am I picking on the Missouri rushing attack when they rolled up over 300 yards against Louisiana Tech? Well, allow me to explain further coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. Thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day, and thanks for telling a friend to go to LockedOnMizzou.com to check this podcast out, and on YouTube, of course, audio, video, the whole bag. But you know what? I'd also like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. So just how important and big is this Kansas State ball game for the Missouri Tigers Well, honestly, I think it's more important for Kansas State. If I'm going to really look at it objectively from both sides of the equation, this is a Kansas State team that has higher expectations than Missouri, in my opinion. So for the Wildcats, if they lose this, they're going to be reeling a little bit. But if you're Missouri, you lose it and look, okay, no big deal, especially if Missouri actually plays a competitive ball game Let's say it's 31 to 23, as I saw somebody predict online recently in the Mizzou beat sphere. Well, that that would be okay with me, especially if it comes down to the end. Kansas State has to actually hold off Missouri at the end. Yes, I'd be definitely disappointed, always in with a loss, but bowl eligibility, which is really the goal, I think, for Missouri this season, get over 500 in particular. A 7-5 and five season would represent at least some little bit of progress in terms of results. But to me, again, everything is still in front of Missouri if they lose this game. Everybody thinks this is a really, really solid Kansas State squad at the very least. Now, their passing game might leave a lot to be desired. We'll probably find out on Saturday. But in terms of defense, in terms of running the football, this is kind of an an old-school take on a new school take on sort of an old school philosophy, right? Play some defense, run the ball, take care of it, and all that good stuff. That'd be the one thing that you would, I think if you're a Kansas State fan, you really got to hope that Adrian Martinez does well on Saturday and throughout the whole season is take care of the football because so often last year, the Wildcats shot themselves in the foot in close ball games by just failing to execute. And that's something that this program really prides themselves on, along with being able to find and develop players that really fit what type of defense and offense they're trying to run. Hey, that sounds kind of familiar, right? The Gary Pinkle era a little bit. But at the same time, I think Kansas State could be vulnerable here if Missouri can really overplay that run game and force them to pass. If Kansas State doesn't have an answer, Could be a long day for the Wildcats. But again, look at it the other side. What if Missouri actually does win this ball game? Well, then it suddenly becomes, it is big for Missouri. If you win this game, you're an eight point, eight and a half point underdog. If you upset a sellout crowd in Manhattan, well, suddenly you're sort of upper echelon goals for Missouri. If you thought eight and four was a possibility, maybe even nine and three. Well, I can't say you're insane at this point. I have to say, I Florida looked impressive this past weekend. You know, Kentucky, I think, got off to a slow start, ended up finishing well. South Carolina, a mixed bag, I thought. So I'm not ready to completely change any projections at this point for sure. But if Missouri actually beat Kansas State this Saturday, well, I think you can start to get a lot more optimistic to, to make what is probably an obvious statement. 
Now, on yesterday's program, I talked a lot about how I was concerned about the Missouri running attack after watching back the Louisiana Tech game. Again, watching those snaps multiple times through through my iPhone's All-22 perspective in the south end zone. So let me, I got quite a bit of pushback because people were saying, well, what are you talking about? Missouri's like top five nationally in rushing after week one. You look at the raw numbers, hey, you're right. I do seem stupid, don't I? Missouri had 50 carries for over 323 yards, exactly 323, I should say, and five touchdowns to boot. So yeah, those are some really impressive raw numbers. But what I was specifically talking about, and I thought I made this clear yesterday, but allow me to clarify even further. What I'm worried about is, simply put, the tailbacks and their actual rushing production, because that wasn't quite as impressive as I felt like it should have been, at least consistently against Louisiana Tech. Now, eventually at the end of the game, you saw Cody Schrader did break off a 29-yard run. Nathaniel Pete broke off a 34-yard run at a certain point. But to me, I just wanted to see the line of scrimmage in particular dominated against Louisiana Tech more. Again, especially on those outside zone and or stretch plays, whatever you want to call them, that type of play, which was Missouri's bread and butter oftentimes last year with Tyler Beatty in the fold, just weren't particularly effective for most of the game, in my opinion. So, and also take a look at this. Yes, Missouri ran for 323 yards in that ball game, but 105 of those yards, nearly one-third of the total, were gained by Brady Cook, Luther Burden, and Dominic Lovett. Those three had long gains, by the way, of 20, 17, and 18 yards, respectively. So again, I'm focusing mostly on the actual traditional running game, the tailbacks, especially when we're under center or or in the shotgun, pistol, whatever it might be, but just straight handoff, your traditional running type plays. Now, on one hand, I, I will say I think some of what I just pointed out is, is sustainable, if not the actual yards per carry, because Brady Cook can obviously run. That's not a fluke. And also this burden... Dominic Lovett wildcat formation where Burden takes the snap and Lovett comes around in a jet sweep action. That could be a really effective wrinkle. Those two guys are really, really explosive. And by the way, how much Luther Dom wildcat do you think we're going to see against Kansas State? And also, can Luther throw a pass? That's another thing I'm immediately wondering here. That could that be a wrinkle that comes out? But regardless. To me, the concern is all about Missouri and and the actual traditional tailback running game. That's what I'm worried about, especially against Louisiana Tech, a team that I just thought should have been dominated a little bit more soundly watching that game back at the line of scrimmage. Hopefully this week against Kansas State, Missouri will run the ball just as effectively, if not more so, and well, hopefully I'll be eating a whole bunch of crow. Nothing would make me happier in this particular case. And coming up, more Missouri football updates. Defensive coordinator Blake Baker had some thoughts, including on a former player of his, a University of Miami transfer, who just arrived, is currently on the Missouri roster. Possible he gets on the field this fall. We're not quite sure yet, so I want to talk about all that. But hopefully Missouri has the right players on the field already. And you know what? As you gear up for fall, You need to find the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders, just like that Missouri offense did this past Thursday. Well, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier for you to find the people you want to talk to faster, because not only does LinkedIn have the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people, they have simple tools like screening questions, which make it far easier for you to focus in on the right candidates with the right skills and experience so you can prioritize who you want to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus their competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week 
nearly 40 million job seekers. Visit LinkedIn. We'll post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Last week, I believe I talked briefly about how Chance Looper, the wide receiver, and of course the son of Missouri's running backs coach, Curtis Looper, seemed like he had really made a step and also just from my eyes had kind of transformed his body this past off season and was really, to me, looking to take a big, bigger share of the receiver role after having some explosive plays his first couple seasons at Missouri. I thought he was going to take a, a much bigger piece of the receiving pie this fall. But unfortunately, right before the season started, Chance Looper came down with some type of, it seems like a fairly serious illness that's going to keep him out for, they're guessing now, at least six to eight weeks or so. So apparently Chance is, is doing okay and, and all that, but no, no information on that and have absolutely no idea what kind of illness it is. And certainly I'm not going to speculate here. All I'll say is chance, just get well. And we can't wait to see you on the field again, because like I said, not only do you want to see the young fella get healthy, that's the first priority. But secondly, I thought he had a really excellent chance to, to make a mark on the field this fall, but You know what? On the other side of the football, Blake Baker, we got a bit of a chance to hear from him. And one thing he talked about was something that I have failed to talk about on this program. Missouri actually got somebody from the transfer portal recently, a former Miami, University of Miami, the U that is, the Hurricanes, not Miami of Ohio. Miami transfer Marcus Clark, a defensive back who had quite a few starts for the Hurricanes last season, but for whatever reason, decided to move on. Well, Blake Baker has experience being the former Miami defensive coordinator. As Blake said here, quote, with Marcus, I got a lot of familiarity. Coached him at Miami. He can really run, has good ball skills, has playing experience. We're going to work with him as we get him in shape. And I'm unsure about his immediate eligibility right now. So it does sound like there's at least a chance that Marcus Clark could see the field for Missouri this season. Not sure how big of a chance, but clearly the Tigers have, the Tigers and or Marcus Clark have applied for a waiver on his behalf. So we'll just have to see what happens as far as that goes. Now, another interesting thing I thought that Blake Baker said is that he was pleased with the tackling in week one for Missouri and that the team always aims for a less than 15% broken tackles rate and Missouri was better than 15% last week. So a thumbs up from Blake Baker. I just thought I'd never actually heard that type of number from a coach before an actual target number from broken tackles, 15%. You know, honestly, that may have been even a tiny bit higher than I would have expected. I guess as fans, we just expect our defenders to make all the tackles, right? So just thought that was interesting to hear that number of 15% as a, as a decent guidepost there. Perhaps we as fans should look for that number as well. And finally, when it comes to defensive and offensive coordinators, it sure seems like the topic of whether they're up in the booth or on the field sure gets an incredible amount of ink and oxygen for something that to me just doesn't seem all that important because I can certainly think of plenty of examples of offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators alike who have been quite effective in the booth and some who have been quite effective on the field as well. To me, it's all about, hey, I want somebody up in the booth. I'm with you there, but why does it have to be the defensive coordinator? If I just have somebody up there who I trust who can be my my sort of eyes and ears up in the sky all the way up in the press box, well, that's fine. That's good enough. I definitely want that perspective. And by the way, just because you're down on the field, especially with modern technology, with tablets and all that good stuff, your Microsoft surfaces that you see on the field, on the sidelines every week in the NFL these days, I can't believe we still spend that much time talking about it. But 
For his part, Blake Baker said, quote, first and foremost, I like being able to look the players in the eyes when they're coming off the field and giving them the calls. So that's why Blake likes to be on the field. And hey, if he wants to be on the field, fine by me. Oh, and hey, looky here. Why don't we switch to basketball for a second? As the Tigers have officially released their entire basketball schedule in full for this upcoming season, you know what? A lot of complaints about the non-conference portion of the schedule, particularly with that start, a lot of boring home games in November, I'll be honest with you. But there is something about this schedule that's actually quite a bit more appealing than last year's schedule. So I want to tell you all about that after these quick messages. So maybe I'm just showing my age here a a tiny bit, but back in my day, kids, I thought the Missouri-Illinois bragging rights game was almost always on a Saturday night, like right before Christmas, basically. But now, well, we're still right before Christmas. This year, though, like last year, going to be a midweek game. And I just can't help but think that has to hurt the attendance of that game. Yes, the fact that Missouri hasn't been particularly good for many seasons the last few years, that probably hurts it even more. The Illinois, the Illini, I should say, have definitely held up their end of the bargain in terms of competitiveness. But I, I just really hate that that game is during the week. Now, maybe Saturday night isn't great for the holidays in terms of TV exposure, but in terms of a live event in terms of a of a game that a lot of people love to go to that was part of the ho- holiday calendar got to think it's a lot easier to do that on a Saturday versus during the week yes we here in America still a lot of us are working on Thursday the 22nd I'm going to raise my hand I know I'll be staring at the stock market all day at the very least may even have a podcast for you that day too but my point is these Saturday games for all the talk of the bad Missouri basketball attendance the last few years, well, there's absolutely no doubt that the attendance gets a heck of a lot better. And I can tell you this from experience as a season ticket holder, even for teams like last year that were mostly non-competitive in a lot of games, those Saturday games draw people in. So unfortunately, the Kentucky game, Missouri gets them at home. Not only is that game on a Wednesday, it's actually going to be right after Christmas and before New Year's, December 28th. So before the students return, again, in the middle of the holiday season, kind of less than ideal there. But compared to last season, a lot more Saturday afternoon and night opportunities here. Only four Saturday games total last year for Missouri basketball, one in the non-conference season. Well, actually seven this year. That's nearly double the amount of Saturday games. So if you're looking to come on down to Mizzou Arena, you've got some opportunities to do so. If you're an out-of-towner and you don't want to bring your kids down on a school night, well, here are your chances. First of all, not the most exciting game to start it off, but on November 26th, you've got Houston Baptist the day after the Arkansas football game, hey, maybe you'll be hanging out Saturday night, or excuse me, Friday night, on Black Friday after the Missouri-Arkansas game. Maybe consider sticking around for Houston Baptist. Hopefully that will be an early afternoon tip-off for those of you who maybe are sticking around for that. But ah, the main event, the next Saturday game, of course, Kansas, the return for the first time in over 10 years to Mizzou Arena. Kansas on December 10th. Do I need to sell that game? I think not. January 7th against Vanderbilt. Well, it's an SEC game. Jerry Stackhouse has got a ways to go, it looks like. Hey, Alabama, the Crimson Tide on January 21st. Then the next Saturday, Iowa State, another good game on a Saturday. Only one in February, unfortunately, on a Saturday at home. February 18th against the Texas A&M Aggies. And then finally, Senior Day, March 4th against Ole Miss. So again, seven Saturday games you can potentially go to, including three non-conference games. And by the way, two of those non-conference games are really high profile. Not only Kansas, but hey, Iowa State coming as well. That was probably the last Missouri sellout at home was in fact 
the Iowa State game. Maybe there were a few others during that Michael Porter Jr. season, actually, but that was the last season with them. Let's put it that way. So, again, last season, Missouri didn't even have a Saturday home game until December 18th. So a lot of good opportunities to come out to Mizzou Arena, support Dennis Gates, support this new look Tiger team, support Isaiah Mosley, the hometown boy and transfer from Missouri State. Should be a fun season, so let's all check it out. And you know what? Thank you so much again for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 eight episode extravaganza with everything to get ready for the NFL season, which of course starts tomorrow. Can you believe it? So search for the ultimate pro football preview 2022 on Odyssey, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks for listening to Locked on Mizzou.